From Vancouver, this is Where It's At, featuring all that's happening in pop music on Canada's West Coast. New groups, the latest news and information from around the world, and interviews with your favorite stars. So, for the next 30 minutes in Vancouver, this is Where It's At, and here's your host, Fred Latrimo. Hello there. Welcome to Where It's At from Vancouver. I have with me one of my good friends and one of the top disc jockeys on the West Coast. You, know, you never get a chance to see what disc jockeys look like on the radio, and you probably have a false impression. Here's a good-looking, handsome disc jockey by the name of Daryl B. Welcome to the show. Good-looking, handsome? Well, look at yourself. You're wonderful. Oh. How's the music scene as far as you're concerned right now? It's busy, and there are a lot of good records out, Fred. A lot of them. Tremendous. There's a, there's a two-fold reason why I've got Daryl on the show today. One, he's a you know a great disc jockey from the West Coast. And two, he is the manager of, of the Northwest Company, who are our featured group on today's show. You uh, like to claim them as your group? The Northwest who? Company. They're your band. My band? <laughs> All right, folks. Let's get down to business. We're going to have a look at the top ten right now. What is number ten? The Beatles and Hey Jude. Did you dig that? Oh, a fantastic record, Fred. They... Uh have sold about five million with that already, and they have a new album coming out on December the 17th, I think, with 24 new cuts on it. Should be good. It's a good sound, hey Jude. Hold Me Tight is number nine with Johnny Nash. Moving down the chart, Magic Carpet Ride, Over You, number seven. Oh, what about I, that? I do not like that record, number seven. It's a bummer, Daryl doesn't like that. This jockeys, you know, don't like all the records they play. We're gonna move on, number six is Eleanor. Number five is All Along the Watchtower, Jimi Hendrix, five or four, that is, is Fire. He's coming to town, right? Arthur Brown will be here on November 23rd. He will be lowered to the stage by a crane. <laughs> uh, yes, well, all right. You mean the kind that bring babies? <laughs> no way. Okay, we're gonna move on now. Number two is White Room with the Crane Three. There you are, the Poppy family, Beyond the Clouds. And number one is Mary Hopkins. Mary Hopkin, little Mary Hopkin from Wales. Terry David Mulligan was fortunate in uh, bopping backstage and chatting with the Vanilla Fudge, and we got a great interview coming up with them. But first, we'd like to uh, have the Northwest Company do their latest hit, which is called Take Me for a Little While. Basically, I would say that, that 
excuse me, I wouldn't say that's just the rascals. That, that's any any group that basically comes from New York. There's, there's a special style of singing from New York, which you know, I don't think the rascals started. But uh, it's been around so long, it's, it's more or less like colored harmony, right. colored vibrato and everything. What's and happened like, in New York over the last year and a half? Uh, Music, the music scene one because uh, nobody like people will stand up for a London sound and, and scream for a Los Angeles sound but nothing comes nothing. out of New York that says well, we are the New York sound well we came out of New York and that's about it mm -hmm. I mean as far as we're concerned so the groups in New York are still going around playing uh, you know just playing in clubs because the people are there uh, are different they don't want to hear like original material and everything yeah. and they're just starting to get into it now at the west coast is into music in general, they're into dancing and you know, that and stuff. They're into dancing and having a good time. <laughs> can you still listen and have a good time? Can you what? Can, you, no, can the, an audience still listen and have a good time? I think so. Oh, yeah, you have a crowd, you know, people like... Well, then, but in general, there's so many people in New York that uh, it's not uh, as geared to music as it is known on the West Coast or England. Right. Well, now, now it's getting better because, uh, you know, the whole music scene is changing you know there's a lot of concerts now and now like the kids uh, they go to a lot of concerts you know like uh, when Jimi Hendrix was in New York or Maso the Cream or the Doors whoever's going to be there the you know houses are usually packed and the kids are usually receptive and they usually sit down and, and you know listen but uh, we're basically basically talking about the clubs now right like we're a group like the groups that start from New York would you know do a circuit of clubs and the whole circuit is different than on the West Coast. The West Coast, like, uh, you know, they do mostly original tunes and uh, you know, do it their own way, and there's a lot of guitars and everything. In New York, it's, it's completely different. They do a lot of, you know, like, uh, hold on, I'm coming. Have so, uh, you lost contact with all of the things that you wanted to keep on? I mean, uh, really, like, like families and, uh, and back home and all of that? Yeah, for, you know, like, you see, you hardly see a family at all now. You know, like, it's... Uh, you come in like, yeah, we're on the road the hell over five, six weeks. You know, we were home one day in between, and like, and during that day we had to go up for a business meeting in our lawyer's office, and you know, that took up the whole day. Right. Then by the time we got back home, so we would live out in Long Island, you know, the day with that night was shot, and we had to get up the next day and leave for the tour again. You know? and like, this keeps going on, but now we're gonna uh, relax, or not really relax, we're gonna, um, Rehearse, I think, about three, four days a week and go out on the weekends so in the midst of doing a new album. That wah-wah music reminds me of one guy, Jimi Hendrix. Funny you should say Jimi Hendrix because uh, Terry David Mulligan had a chance to chat with him uh, during a show at the Coliseum. We've right, here it is. The Jimi Hendrix experience. I'm sure everybody knows him by now, but we'll run it down. Mitch Mitchell, Jimi Hendrix, Noel Redding. Uh, you have not been to Vancouver before, but you have been to Canada. Did you play uh, Montreal or the Coast one time? Yeah, we did. We played Montreal on this uh, tour that we're on now. Right. It's a really nice tour. Did you? What else did you play? Toronto? Yeah, right. Was just one night? Yeah, not in Ontario. Ontario. So. Did three you notice that was uh, anything different from the audience that you've been used to? Not necessarily. There was more uh, raving, like, you know. There was more on their yeah. toes than some audiences, you know. But that's because we probably haven't played there before. What about the music, though? Did they know the music? Did they seem to appreciate it? Seems English to me, yeah. Really? Yeah, it's rather like going out, maybe go to the depths of England up north. Like, you know, they haven't seen you before. They were quite a while. Yeah, it's the music. They were, uh, as far as Canada is concerned, they were almost the last to pick up on your music. It seems they were almost hesitant to do it. Probably because they didn't hear it. They was probably the last ones to hear it, probably. Mm. Canada is always the last. They don't get the records up here as quick as some people's Sorry. certain types of records. Yeah. They still have Dawson Annex School here. Do they still have one? Dawson School. Dawson Annex. Yes. Yes. Right, I used to go there. <laughs> <laughs> the good old days. You have relatives up here, didn't you? Yeah, they're all Is there still a family thing going on? What do you mean by that? Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> no, all right, okay. Well, what do you mean? Do you mean, do I still have a family? No, do you, do you, I know you don't get back here often or it comes back at all, but do you recognize most of these people from, from them? Well, like, I know what my family is like quite naturally. I just don't get a chance to see them until maybe we play here. You know, this is only the second time in about eight years. I've seen, you know, my dad and my mother and sisters and so forth. And, like, my grandmother and uh, her boyfriend and uh, my cousins are out there now, you know. And I, like to see, I haven't seen them yet. They're out there. I'll see them later on tonight. Does anything change when the family's in front of you? For any one of you? I don't know. We've all done. We did um, a tour 
once in England and we did a show in London and we had the same thing. Uh, my parents came up, Mitch's parents came up, you know. And, Hello, Mum. <laughs> as you'd like to possibly. But uh, the current thing that's happening over there where they started a rock revival and then they did something else, do you find that it's starting to sway like your home base and the music that was coming out of there? Are they sort of uncertain as what they're doing over there? Do they, is there something definitely happening with underground music? There's, a there's always something well, happening. Yeah, the, yeah, there's always something happening, but I mean, underground music, you know, music's music. We don't know, it's the same all over the world. It's it's the it's the way, so. Because like, after the Beatles like, took it back, so you know, after they sat down for a while, and then it got really mixed up, like, you know, there's different things coming up. They got the traffic and the family, all these groups that you don't hear about all the time, you know. They're happening as far as music-wise, but as far as, you know, they're, they're really stuck up on, uh, like, balance and, uh, you know, pop. Yeah. They're all screwed up right now, so. Do you think it'll straighten up? Yeah, so as we get over there, it's true. <laughs> what are you, you, you going to do? You have another LP coming? Yeah, a double working on it. It's finished, completely finished. It'll be out in about 10 days. So then, yeah. <laughs> it's called Electric Lady now. Electric Lady? Yeah. No, did you do anything? Sorry. Did you do anything uh, on the LP that... Uh, did you get a chance to sing it? <coughs> yeah. Did you sing it? Yeah, he has a song called Little Miss Strange. This is the beginning track on the, uh, one of the sides. It's the fourth side of the LP. He has a beginning track on one of the sides. <laughs> he looks interesting in the song. Um, <laughs> Excuse me. Is that a cold hay fever? What else does it change the climate? Yeah. Know, coming from, uh, what was it, Salt Lake all the way to Denver, and then Los Angeles. But like, uh, him and uh, Mitch are singing this English rock type thing. It's called The Strange. It's not. This revival in the blues and this, this mention of the blues. It's revival. Right, I mean, right. you know, all I know, you know, I'm just playing the way I feel. If it sounds like blues, well then, you know, call it anything you want. But it's no revival kit. Because uh, why go back into the past, you know? Why go back there and drag out blue suede shoes? Just because it's supposed to be hip to revive rock, you know? Which is a drag in the first place, because those people have done their thing and they're, you know, they're not offering you anything this very instant, are they? There's so many musicians right now playing 20 times better than any Chuck Berry or any Fat uh, Stone or anybody. I'm not putting these people down, I'm just saying that the music's better now, and people just don't even know it. it's right in their faces. They don't even know how to accept it because it's. You know, this is so much better. And they have to have gimmicks and imagery to go by. If, if they don't have these things in the way, then they don't know nothing about music. That's the way some people think, which is a big fat drag sometimes. Do you ever surprise yourself at some of the things you come up with when you play? Yeah. You find yourself in a completely different On classic stage? set. Yeah. Do you find yourself playing things that you've written for a long time? I don't even know, because I don't want to even think about what I'm actually playing or what I can play. I just want to listen to what Noel and Jimmy are playing. And it's big that. Like, I hope they listen to me. Because actually, we never know what we're doing on stage, maybe until you might record it one way, <coughs> listen to it, and then you might actually get some enjoyment from it. Maybe. You might just think it's a big fat drag. We've been together for about two solid years, yeah. and we've been playing Purple Haze, and One Rise Mary, uh, who was an angel, Foxy Lady. We've been playing all these songs, which I really think are groovy songs, but we've been playing all these songs for two years. So quite naturally, we start improvising here and there. And there's other things we want to turn on to the people, you know. As long as they're aware that, that we're trying to be a music group, regardless of what we might look like, or, you know. Daryl, thank you very much. We've run out of time for where it's at. Thanks for coming on. Thank you very much, Fred. I hope to see more of you. And you keep the Northwest Company in line with you? Certainly will. Okay. And thank you, Northwest Company. And thank you for watching. And right now, I want to remind you to enter our pop music poll, which is coming up in the contest prize. Hasn't been announced yet, but we'll tell you about it. It's top secret. And so send in your votes for your favorite male vocalist, your favorite female vocalist, your favorite group, favorite Canadian group or vocalist, and your favorite disc of 1968. Try and remember all those things. Count them on your fingers or something. And send your votes to Where It's At, CBC TV, 1200 West Georgia Street, Vancouver 5, B.C. Okay, Where It's At, CBC TV, 1200 West Georgia Street, Vancouver 5, B.C. The Wiggy Symphony and Little Richard next week. Until then, bye-bye.